What's up, everybody? Brothers, sisters, psychonauts, and seekers of truth, it is Ananka, and welcome to my bazaar. Today, I have a magic mushrooms, slash Amanita muscaria, slash belladonna, slash brugmansia trip report for you. The title of this trip report is Sensory Illusion destroyed, and was submitted to Erowid in 2006 by the user, the Crake. With all that being said, let our story begin. On October 31st, 2005, I had a witch's brew of 33 Liberty Cap mushrooms locally picked and three belladonna cherries from a companion who I will call Issa for the sake of his paranoia. On the 1st of December 2005, with the new moon black in the sky, an especially good time for earth magic and divination. Thick, dense clouds hovering overhead, I undertook a journey into the recesses of the mind and tasted my own insanity. Near Castle Combe, about five miles from where I live, there is an ancient burial chamber called Lan Hill Long Barrow. It was partially destroyed by grave diggers in 1906, and two of the three doorways were collapsed. The only remaining door has been shored up with horrible iron bars and badly placed bricks. The space available is about 10 foot by 5 foot and a 4 foot depth. It is infested with spiders, absolutely massive ones, and there are signs of rats burrowing in and using the small cave as an escape route. Isa and I decided we would use the small chamber as an isolation tank, a sensory prison cell, if you will. In the same way long barrows and tombs have been used for millennia to contact the fathers and ancestors. So I read up a bit on Mayan, Aztec, Celtic, American Indian, and Pictish rituals regarding the dead and speaking with them, and decided on a brew to help me there. I took three belladonna cherries from Issa's back garden. He then gave me three fly agaric caps from his collection. I selected three plump-looking Liberty Caps to put in, and the three Brugmansia flowers that I had dried some time ago. This was purely numerology more than anything. Three flowers, three cherries, three caps, three shrooms. Twelve elements altogether, which again adds up to three. The number three has been sacred to native cultures since they learned to count. I discovered that during initiation rituals among the Peruvian shamans, they add cemetery dust or earth from a grave. So we went to the barrow during the week and collected some brown dirt from the back of the chamber. I put the mushrooms in a pan of boiling water and let them ooze out and turn into ugly little slugs. Then I took it off the heat and as it cooled added the Brugmansia and Belladonna. The mud came last, and added a distinct blackness to the whole thing. I let this steam itself and stew away in a corner whilst I busied myself with preparations. I then sieved and poured the brews into two half-pint bottles. It looked like a dull-colored urine. I went to Issa's house, and he was preparing his brew of 55 grams of dried powdered Peruvian torch and San Pedro cactus. It was thick, like a vile mucus, and the lemons slightly curdled, so he was drinking a bitter, acrid jelly that he had to spoon drink rather than gulp. As we made the five-mile trek in the pissing down rain, I started to drink the first bottle of my brew. It tasted somewhere between glorious and disgusting. The flowers and cherries gave it a warm nectar kind of fruitiness, and the mushrooms and earth made it taste like old jockstrap. I managed to sip it down, as the Peruvian shamans say, 
poco el poco, or little by little. Once we were within a mile of the barrow, I started to feel very weak. My arms were like dead weights, my legs were dragging on the floor. I could hardly even climb a three-foot-high fence without fear of falling flat on my face. All around me, everything was changing. It was as if I could see the spirits of grass, mud, trees, clouds, all making horrendous faces. But in that state of mind, I just chuckled. When we finally reached the barrow, I was already in a complete state. Isa was fine, just waiting for the mescaline to kick in, whilst I was semi-hunched, soaking wet, and freezing cold in the doorway. This was supposed to be a journey for me to face my fears, but at this point all I could think of was being warm and dry. I unpacked my bag, and we lit some candles and lay a few trinkets around. Some old flint of mine, a statue of an owl, a piece of a rock I had painted in honor of the mother. Isa had a look in his eye that said, What the fuck? And I couldn't place what he was confused about. Then I realized it was me, with eyes as wide as they could possibly open and gawking around the room in a semi-state of insanity. I dragged myself into the back corner and slumped among the rocks. Isa sat at the entrance and meditated. That's when everything started to get a bit weird. I closed my eyes and just appeared at home. I was in my flat walking around and then I saw my girlfriend, I think, bad memory, and I said I love you to her. Then I awoke and Isa was laughing. I love you too, man. Are you all right? I just stared and smiled, and then nervously lay down again. It's hard to explain, but the walls became Isa, and Isa became a rock, and vice versa for the next half an hour. I would go to say something and realize it was a stone, not his face, and then hear giggling behind me and see him sat there with a look of shock on his face. Everything was what it is not and could possibly be. I grabbed Issa's foot at one point, totally convinced that it was something of mine that I needed to hold on to. Every time we tried to talk or I tried to say something, the words came out all jumbled and slow. I could hear the words in my head but couldn't speak properly. All I could manage every now and then was the odd, Mm, not far now, where? Mm. <laughs> All from this one bottle. I hadn't even opened the other one yet. I was attempting to speak to Isa, but all I could ever muster was the beginning of a sentence and not the end. Isa is a master shaman in the making, so seeing me, somewhat his apprentice, in a state of no control was quite strange. I would think I was talking to him, and then look up for an answer, and he would just look at me. Then I would slowly realize I hadn't spoken at all. As these bizarre symptoms continued to increase, I began flitting between the dream world and the real world. Most of the inner visions were quite strange, but slightly tame. I was in an etheric version of an ITV game show. Then I was in town, then at home, and then on a mountain. I think with these plants, you can literally appear and reappear wherever and whenever you want. When I closed my eyes, I could see the cave and other people. And then when I opened them, little fragments of the dream image would stay imprinted on the reality. For the next hour or two, I could find I could see substances, items, bottles and all sorts of strange things, but when I went to touch them, my hands went straight through. Because I had no way of telling what was real or not, I became convinced that if I mastered Brugmansia, I could walk through walls and make objects appear before my eyes. 
all the time trying to explain this to Isa and him just staring in disbelief. I went for a piss several times, probably six or seven, and each time got distracted by the outside world. When I turned around to re-enter the barrow, it was gone, and I searched around in dismay. Then Isa would shout from inside the barrow, and it would suddenly appear behind me. Just as we were about to leave because it was so cold and wet, I started actually breaking through the barriers I wanted to remove. All over the barrow, paintings started to appear. The most beautiful and archaic cave paintings in a Neanderthal style. They were crude, but somehow in their childishness made all the more special. I tried to motion to Isa that the room was covered in detailed, ultra-psychedelic imagery. All over the walls and dark shadows, there were intricate, layered patterns of what I can only describe as insect wings. The pictures moved and swayed with some ancient energy, and my inner mind became acutely aware that I was not merely hallucinating. I was seeing the cave paintings before the barrow was destroyed. They depicted the most wonderful, romantic scenes of the hunt. A shaman, witches, wizards, communities, villages, barrows, aliens, and spirits. Everything I ever sought from Brugmancia was shown to me in an instant. On that note, Isa collected all our things together, and we started the journey home. I didn't know at the time, but Isa was getting quite worried about me. To me, I felt perfectly fine, if a little disorientated and confused, but well aware of what was going on. Turns out I wasn't. Isa told me that I was stumbling behind him, muttering and being distracted by all sorts. One minute I would be behind him, then he'd turn around and I was off in some ditch claiming I could see something. Then we got into civilization, and I totally lost it. To be honest, I have absolutely no memory of how I got home or what happened. I have disjointed flashbacks of me finding an imaginary pen and demanding that Issa wait for me whilst I try to pick it up. Obviously, it was an illusion, and my hand just kept going through it. There are not words to express how frustrating it is to try and touch something that all of your senses confirm is there, but when you reach out, your flesh just slides through. When we got back to Issa's, I was in a worse state than ever. I thought I was fine, but I was swaying. I couldn't stand, sit, kneel, or move without seeing something or getting confused. At one point before we left for my flat, I demanded to know where Issa had put my clean socks and trousers. Him and his girlfriend B just stared in shock. I started rummaging through Issa's clothes and started getting angry that either they were hiding my dry clothes or I was so messed up that I was wrong. Another memory blank and I was home with my house full of drunk friends of my fiancé's. She was worried sick and came to see if I was okay. I managed to grip enough of my sanity to fake being fine and kept my mouth shut, knowing I would make an ass of myself if I were able to have everyone's attention. One of Vixen's friends asked me if my trip was good, and if I saw anything. I just nodded and said, very good, yes. It turns out Issa fully thought I had lost the plot, and I believe if I were able to listen to a recording of the evening on tape, it would blow my mind. So a final note, as a warning to the drug culture wannabes of the world. Do not fuck with these plants. Mushrooms have a built-in defense system that if you aren't ready, you just get your pretty colors and your giggles. Brugmancia and Belladonna do not play games. These plants will make you temporarily insane. As the Peruvian shamans say, the Brugmancia is the key to the underworld. You become one with the spirits, but join with their complete lack of ego control. 
With Brugmancia, there is no control. And I honestly believe if Issa hadn't been there, I would have ended up in a ditch chasing some random illusionary object. But for those of you who want a profound shamanic experience, then maybe the Salonaceous plants are for you. Mother Darkness is my ally now, and I have dedicated myself to her. The journey I undertook in that soaking wet, freezing cold hole has changed me forever. I no longer want to have fun on a journey. I don't want pretty colors and intricate but boring hallucinations. Brugmancia single-handedly rips the door off of its hinges and demands respect. I have the second brew still to drink, and maybe on a somewhat warmer evening I will go back to the barrow and see what else she has to offer. But please, 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 if you cannot handle substances that remove your self-control, do not mess with these plants. Even the ayahuasca shamans in Central America warn people against the Dechora shaman and his total insanity. So be careful, and demand that a companion comes with you. Side note, oh and by the way, I still have blurry vision and slurred speech for the next 24 hours after the end of the visions. All right, everybody, that is the end of our story. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Share with us your Brugmancia experiences down in the comments below. Check out the other videos and playlists on my channel, and I will see you in the next one, fam. Deuces!